February 3rd, 2015. We got a citizen's comments. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. We do have several speakers on the citizens forum tonight. You have a three minute limit. If you reach that time, Chief Walker will let you know that it's time to stop talking. When you approach the lectern, please state your name and give your address. The first speaker is Scott Butler. I'm, live, I'm at, uh, well, I live in Smyrna, 8181 Rocky Fork, Smyrna, but I'm actually building a subdivision in Laverne called Pinnacle Point. And uh, I just want to just take a minute of your time that I wanted to share. As far as the sprinklers go, we was want to just share uh, some info as far as the economic effect that it's been having uh, with these uh, sprinklers that are going to be discussed or <clears throat> in the upcoming meetings. Um, we're, I've talked to the other builders. There's only like four builders that I'm aware of that's building currently building in Laverne, and we're all losing customers and losing sales. I've lost two customers. I haven't pulled any permits since this has went into effect, which is what last June or July, I can't remember, but um, because I can't, you know, the sales I'm trying to, you know, I've been working pre-sales and just losing customers, which in return, as far as losing customers, I'm gonna have to go where the customers are gonna go, which is the next town that doesn't have any sprinklers. And by losing, you know, with these builders, we're all saying we're going to have to pull out as soon as we can, and it just lo it's going to lose revenue for Laverne, and it's going to lose, uh, you know, tax money for uh, Laverne, impact fees for Laverne's, and I just want you guys to uh, consider that. And, and I'd like to see it, um, you know, where it's freedom of choice, where you can have your own. If you, if you want to choose to put the sprinkler system in your house, you, you have a right as a homeowner to, to do that. We have no problem putting them in if, you know, if it's agreed upon to be paid for, just not make it mandatory. Just leave it freedom of choice, like it's freedom of choice if you want a security system or tornado shelter, it just all needs to be freedom of choice and less government. I'm for less government. That's, thank you. Thank you. Next up is Mike McCann. I'm Mike McCann, live at 2119 Holly Grove Road in Las Casas. I am the owner of Michael's Homes, partner with another, with Mitchell Bowman. We currently build several homes in the Laverne area, in several subdivisions, McFarland Point, Martins Bend, and we are currently developing the Ridge, which is off of Walton Road and Lake Road. The sprinkler system, we are getting feedback from our customers that they're opposed to it. They're, they're afraid of the ramifications of them bursting because of cold weather, which right now I've got a lawsuit with an insurance company that we had installed sprinkler system in our home at Walden Road that the couple have lived in for a few years. It was our model house for a few years. That burst. Um, the liability of the sprinkler system with maintenance on there and and the care for the sprinkler system that you're you're imposing on the home buyer the home buyer you know a home buyer wants to move into a home to where less maintenance they don't want to have to worry about a sprinkler system and a sprinkler system which i don't believe was considered all the ramifications of a sprinkler system when you do implement it on home buyers is that there are maintenance involved in them i mean somebody has to look at it is the city of Laverne willing to go and say, hey, we're going to have to check the sprinkler systems on every home that we install them on from this point forward. Home buyers, like I said, they want everything as simple as can be with less maintenance. Um, once again, our feedback that I'm getting is let us let the home buyers choose if they want the sprinkler system. As Scott said, don't mandate it on them. Let them make their choice. Um, I believe that our home buyers are smart enough. If they want them, let's put them in. Our smoke detectors do sufficient amount of work. They work for us. They are in <coughs> outside and inside of every bedroom. We're doing carbon monoxide. We're doing a lot of things to secure the home to where it makes it more fireproof or less likely to have a, a ramifications because of a fire. There's adequate time for people to get out of homes. And that's the feedback that I'm getting from our 
buyers or potential buyers. We've lost, I've got people right now that are pre-selling in the ridge and they are saying that, hey, you know, I don't know if I want a sprinkler system in it. If, if I have to do a sprinkler system in it, do you have, I mean, do you have other subdivisions that don't require sprinkler systems? And which we do. We build homes all over Rutherford County and in Hamilton County, and we're not required to do sprinkler systems in any of those other subdivisions. So just consider that uh, and let the home buyers make their choice as far as what they're wanting to do. Thanks. Thank you. Dennis Butler. Joe Morgan. Angela Lester. Angela Lester, I live in Smyrna. I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you. My husband and I have worked very hard. Uh, I'm a crazy coupon clipper. We have saved our money and we want to purchase a home. We are working with Morgan and Son currently. Uh, we were ready to go to contract back in December. We already had all of our financing in order. We've got our house plans together. And then we found out that there's a possibility of being told, being mandated, that we have to put a sprinkler system in our home. It's simply not economically feasible for our family to have that. So that's, that's issue number one. Issue number two, I feel like it's unnecessary. Um, I spoke to my father, who is a retired fire captain, Metro Davidson County Nashville firefighter for almost 40 years, and spoke to him about the safety ramifications of having a sprinkler system in the home and the problems that one incurs having these sprinkler systems in your home far outweighs any possible conceivable benefit that it might be to you to have this in your home. Uh, as the other gentleman stated, as long as you have got your, uh, your smoke detectors and your any type of radon or carbon monoxide detectors, that's the main issue that I'm concerned about as a mother of a small child and as a wife. You want your, your family to be safe. So the main safety issue is going to be with having that detection. Because in speaking to my father, he said that the majority of the issues that one would have in their home with a fire is a kitchen fire. So obviously if there's a kitchen fire, you were there cooking. Or maybe you walked off and that's why the fire started. But you were there to stop the fire. It's not some type of extraneous issue or act of God that would cause one to need this in their home. So I implore you to please do not mandate this because we, like I said, we've been ready since December to build our home and I'm ready to move into our new home as a family and we want to live in Laverne. But I feel that if this passes, it's just not going to be economically feasible for me and my family. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Jerry Butler. Jessica Crow. Hi, I'm Jessica Crow. I live in Laverne currently. I've been working with Morgan and Son for several months to um, move our family out of a house that was built in the 90s. Um, one of the reasons that we're looking to move is our maintenance upkeep on an older home. Um, we're looking to build our dream home and get into a house where we're not going to have to spend the extra money on maintaining um, um, heaters and sprinklers or whatever it may be um, that's going to cost us more money. The most important thing for me as a mother um, as a wife, as a caretaker of an elderly um, father-in-law, is the safety of my family. And um, in looking at the research that's been provided by the University of Tennessee, doing some research on my own, I don't believe that a sprinkler system in my, ho in my home is going to help me save lives. I think it's going to cost me more money. I have a smart home system. I have fire detectors. And I have... I'm, I'm an informed citizen, and the cost of building sprinkler systems in our home is 
is going to result in us moving out of this county, out of this city, because we're not going to be able to afford it. So, um, like everyone has been saying um, before me, I, I have concerns about the pipes bursting, about my insurance not covering it, and fire detectors have been proven and they're tried and tested, and I am a firm believer that that will help us um, make it through a, a home fire. Thank you. Thank you. And last is Kevin Woodward. Hello, my name is Kevin Woodward. I live at 2101 Sherbrooke Lane. I'm uh, also the president of the Rutherford County Home Builders Association. Um, since the inclusion of the mandatory requirement for sprinklers, 42 states have mandated or opted out of the sprinkler as a code mandate. Um, 42 states, I again repeat, have mandated out of that code process. Um, we as building industry support the voluntary inclusion of sprinklers at the buyer's choice. Um, I'm going to read something from, from the IRC. Uh, the IRC clearly states, and I quote, the purpose of this code is to provide minimum requirements to, stand, to safeguard life or limb, health, and public welfare. The IRC commentary also states that the IRC is intended to provide reasonable minimum standards that reduce the factors of hazardous and substandard conditions that would otherwise put the public at risk in damaging their health, safety, or welfare. Any imposition in our, our position is if that is mandated by a sprinkler requirement is excessive and is not a reasonable minimum standard for meeting the purpose of the code. Um, it is also important to remember that the code is composed of many life-saving standards that have been proven to meet and succeed in saving lives. The purpose of the hardwired interconnected smoke systems is one of those systems. Thank you for <coughs> your time. Thank you. That's all we have. We'll call this public hearing closed. We've got about five minutes to uh, to the meeting. Can't you share with you about Vegas? Let me get some more. Yeah. The mic is on. It is. We'll call this meeting uh, Board of May and Alderman, February 3rd, 2015, regular meeting. Call this meeting in order. We got a quorum, uh, prayer by Alderman Jones, and pledge of allegiance by Vice Mayor Green. Everybody, please stand. Lord, I come to you as humble as we know how, asking you tonight to please grant us the wisdom, the patience, and the knowledge to effectively conduct our jobs here to help this wonderful city of Laverne. We ask that everyone please be humble in their presence here and understand that we're doing this for the city and what's best for the city. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Mike. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Order of business uh, will prove our look over your minutes. We need to prove the minutes for January the 8th. 2015 regular meeting. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I, I need a second. Second. Got a second. Uh, everybody says aye. 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 Motion approved. Minutes. Are we going right into the uh, department reports? Fire. The month of January 2015, we had a total of 282 calls. That consisted of two structure fires, 24 fire alarms, one vehicle fire, one grass fire, four hazardous materials calls, 26 motor vehicle accidents, <coughs> 210 <coughs> medical calls, two canceled in route, and 12 miscellaneous calls. Our average response time for the month of January 2015 was 3.3 minutes, and total water consumption was 2,300 gallons. Any questions? Good job. Thank you. Thank you.
Police. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, you have uh, the copy of the reports we have, I think, there in your package. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But I would uh, uh, tell you that down on the third page of our report, it'll indicate that from the two different uh, CAD systems, we had 30,245 calls for service in 2014. Now, there's another sheet that came around just to let you know. Uh, officer, our community liaison officer, Sheree Robertson, and Sergeant JJ or John Newbank, uh, who is sergeant over our crime suppression unit, visited 43 businesses last week, gave them this flyer, and told them that we would host here at the police department um, a meeting of the business managers, whomever from there, to cover those items that you see. We had four show up last night, but we're going to do it again, do it quarterly and invite them again. That way we can tell our businesses what we see happening and what's occurring and even offer to help them uh, with issues concerning being able to see and know what's going on and information we have to have up front. And to also ask them to, uh, to please tell their employees, don't wait seven and a half minutes to dial 911 if something occurs or five minutes or five and a half minutes or even four minutes, which we've seen on videos that we've gotten from businesses uh, from the time it occurs until we actually get the call. So we're gonna be doing that as an additional thing uh, as part of our community-oriented community policing program. Do you have any questions? And I made it in less than three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I believe that's a record. Codes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. The monthly report for January 2015 is as follows. Uh, single family dwellings, over four permits issued, valuation of $750,000. Over three commercial permits issued at 1.2 million. Uh, one miscellaneous permit, one sign, two grading, four other to include additions and remodels. Um, three commercial plan review, Total number of permits were 15 at an estimation of valuation of 2.1 million. The plumbing permits were four issued for January, three commercial plumbing permits, four single family dwelling permits, and three commercial permits. Complaints for the month, tall grass, there were six. Junk cars in the yard, there were nine. 68 other. Building inspections were 109. Inspections this month for fire, uh, commercial, fire, commercial and fire inspections were 52. Um, monthly revenue with impact fees was $43,000, and $43,006.92. Um, I might want to point out too that I received in the mail today the plans, building plans for Walmart. I know they've got to go back before planning commission for, um, I think it was the the um, gas canopy, but um, they cleared a small forest, part of the rainforest, and it's sitting in my office. There's plans that are huge, but Walmart plans have hit the hit our table, so I would expect to see start seeing some movement out there pretty soon. Any questions? Good deal. Thank you, Randolph. Thank you, sir. The XB Park and Recreation Department. <coughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. Um, there's a report you see up there. Uh, we had 41 help desk tickets in the month of January with 166 man hours. That $5,020 you see is uh, total savings on three major projects that we did last month. Uh, replaced a whole breaker box at Public Works. Not just the breakers, the box and all. Uh, did an upgrade over at Fire Station 2 and then had bust pipes down at Football. Uh, we estimate we saved about $5,000 doing it in-house. Um, don't forget we have uh yeah yeah those are just that, that's not a major thing but still all that stuff adds up too yeah oh yeah i know uh but don't forget we have our daddy dollar dance coming up this weekend february 7th at uh, roy waldron gym from two to four so y'all feel free to bring out your daughters and sons and mom and mamas are welcome too so uh and that's all i have does anybody have any questions 
Thank you. Thank you, AC. Next will be finance. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. Tonight's financial report represents our half uh, first six months of our year, which are halfway into our fiscal year. For the general fund, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately eight hundred ninety-six thousand dollars. We've collected about two point five million dollars in sales tax. That's a about a half million dollars better than what we budgeted for at this time, and <coughs> it's about three hundred forty-four thousand dollars better than prior year. State Street Eight fund revenues um, are down expenses are up uh, 139,000 stormwater revenues are up um, revenues exceeded expenditures by approximately 229,000 and in the water sewer fund revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately 1.3 million dollars second page represents our balances and our various bank accounts and the third page is a comparison to prior year for the general fund our revenues are up about 1.1 million dollars and expenses are down about 911. In the water sewer fund, revenues are up 286,000, and expenses are up 104. Any questions? Thank you. Moving on to the library, Donna. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, good evening. For the month of January, there were 8,212 items checked out. Attendance in the library, 9,186. And I would like to point out that from last January, we are up 1,470 people. Uh, with a daily average of 367, we issued 166 cards. There were 51 library programs with 742 in attendance. And total computer users were 3,044. Some of the highlights in January included on the 14th of January, we had two career specialists from the Tennessee Department of Labor, and they spoke to 18 people who were interested in employment opportunities. On the 26th, St. Thomas Mobile Health Unit were available at the library, and they gave free flu shots to ages three and older. The adult and teen reading program began on the 17th, and it's going to continue until Saturday, February the 28th. We currently have 25 teens enrolled and 43 adults. On January 31st, the library hosted a Downton Abbey Tea Party. In attendance, we had queens, duchesses, ladies, and a butler who summoned the ladies, with, who was summoned by the ladies with the tinkling of a bell. A very good time was had by all, reported Lady Catherine, she was hostess of the tea, and she's better known as Paula Donahue, our assistant director. Upcoming events in February include this Thursday night at 6 p.m., Let's Make a Paper Snowflake Class by Carol Brown. It's not your typical snowflake. Had to bring, you know, my show and tell. So if you would like to learn to make these beautiful snowflakes, come to the library Thursday at 6 p.m., we have our warm-up at the library every Friday from 9.30 until 11.30 a.m. You can enjoy hot cocoa, coffee, and a pastry. And on Saturday, February the 14th, we're going to have Frozen in February Family Day. It's going to be fun and interactive games for the family, including Find and Build Olaf the Snowman, a snowball toss, and family karaoke to the songs of Frozen. Also, as the page turns, Adult Reading Group will meet on Thursday the 26th at 6 p.m., and the book this month is The Girl You Left Behind, written by Jojo Moyes. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Moving on to water treatment. Thomas. Eden Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, Kathy. Uh, so we have two reports in one this month. We have our, our regular December report, then our year in our annual report of the calendar year 2014. I'll just go over a couple of highlights of the 20, I mean, the December report. <clears throat> is that our, our, I guess our maintenance was at a little over $2,100 for the month. Uh, just a couple of minor things that we had. We had 16 uh, quality calls uh, for water, which uh, five were appearance, one was taste and odor, 10 were pressure. This is why our guys, we like to go out and try to talk with the customer when they call in a complaint. The one that had the taste and odor, uh, come to find out she had a water softener that was 
in need of some really bad maintenance. Her water was tasting actually salty, and uh, it was just uh, coming back into her house. So we, we kind of educated her. She got that fixed up. <clears throat> uh, December uh, was an average month. We've made about 75 million gallons of water that was put out. Our membrane unit uh, reclaimed of the wastewater of that about 7.3 million which translates to a little over $12,000 savings going to Metro. Uh, more so in our yearly uh, figures, which would be on the last page, if we're keeping up there. It's all in front if you have any questions. But our, our Volume delivered through the city was just at 900 million gallons, and that's, that's about the average of the other years that we've had. Our membrane recovered and put out uh, 79 <coughs> million gallons. Uh, I guess the big numbers there is that the reclaimed water uh, saved the city in metro fees a little under $150,000 from, from that part. That's, it was a really good one there. Um, we had ex excellent year, no accidents. Nothing to report, uh, good healthy year from all our employees. We're full staffed there. Um, looking forward to a, another good year. That's what I'll have. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. Moving on to public works, uh, Mr. Russell. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. This will be for the month of January, 2015. We had a total of brush removal of 54,980. Uh, it slowed down some in the brush. 240 workhouse hours, uh, 90 work orders with 24 and a half hours overtime. And we did take the Christmas lights down and a couple of times we went out and salted some of the bridges. Not that much. Uh, in the fleet department, we've had a total of 39 vehicle repairs, 29 in-house, 10 out. We did 35 oil changes, 16 in-house, 19 at Babylene. And we put on about 14 tires, five sets of brakes, and seven equipment repairs. That's all I have. They are working on the salt barn. Sounds like you had a pretty busy month. Yeah, it's been busy. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. The utility department. Mayor Alderman, good afternoon. Uh, for the month of January, the water department, we had a total of 115 work orders, 13 new meter sets. We answered 133 Tennessee one calls, <clears throat> had one main line break and eight service line breaks, estimated 5,550 uh, 5, gallons of water not sold with a total of 46 hours overtime. And Project AMR was able to install 1,246 meters for the month of January, so we're getting really close there. On down to sewer, had a total of 102 work orders, 74 service call work orders, 28 pump station work orders, zero fin uh, final ground and pump inspections for the month. We were able to rebuild seven in-house with a total of 49 and a half overtime. Any questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Human resources. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman. Here is the report for Human Resources. We had two external jobs posted, 49 applicants, one actual new hire, a total of 94 job interest cards. There were zero resignations, zero terminations in January. We have one workers' compensation claim. As you note in the bottom section, there were 114 care here appointments, one no show, 286 care here enrollments and eight HRA conducted for care here. You do not have the information under the medical for our Blue Cross Blue Shield and our health cost solution run out period. We have those figures, but we want to make sure that they are uh, reported appropriately. So employee claims total from January 1st, 2015, I have an amount of $60,081.37. Dependent claim totals, $55,318.50. Total pay claim dollars, $135,329.48.
And again, this is a combination of our run out with health cost solutions and our new Blue Cross Blue Shield claims. So going forward, we will toggle it out um, throughout the rest of the year, but we just wanted to make sure that you understood that it was a combination of both health cost claims and our Blue Cross claims. Are there any questions? Thank you. Moving on to the presentation, we got a, a confirmation of uh, Ger Gerald Scott Day. She's a lady that I think turns a uh, hundred years old. We have her family here. I don't know if she. You'll call them up and we'll give the presentation to them. Mrs. family here? She's 100 today. Is Geraldine Scott's family present? Right. This is Geraldine Scott Day. Yeah. I guess she's not here. Seeing or not here, we'll say that she gets the uh, the certificate. But uh, we'll call it February 18th, Gerald Scott Day in Laverne. She she'll be 100 years old, and uh, that's quite a quite a feat there. Yeah, Geraldine's is her name. Geraldine. Moving on to old business. Second reading ordinance 2015. Dash 01, an ordinance to amend Title 20, Chapter 2, Section 20-208 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding pork and recreation user fees. AC? Yes, that's just the, the same one we read on the last, uh, at the last meeting about changing the tournament fees. It doesn't have anything to do with rec ball. It's just, you know, if you uh, book more than one tournament with us if you book two tournaments with it you get, you get a break on the, the gate fees that's what that is. we talked about this and already talked about it yes sir uh motion need a motion got a motion need a second second uh second yeah. say aye everybody say aye aye okay aye. something i forgot to mention uh employee of the month we were doing it every month we're going to start doing it quarterly that's the reason we ain't doing the employee of the month today. We're gonna to still do it. We we'll do it every three months out of one month. Uh, all department heads kind of decided that in the staff meeting, so so everybody know that. Moving on to the consent agenda. All items we discussed during the workshop. Uh, need a motion to approve or deny the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion to approve is second. Second. A second. Everybody say aye. 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 Motion carries. Oops. Moving on to the new business. Court board. <coughs> Motion to appoint or remove board members. First to be a uh, zoning and appeals. Members, we've got Chairman Douglas Stan. Sam Hill, he's uh, the chairman. Uh, I think we talked to him and he wanted to be uh, reappointed. Uh, I guess we need to vote on that one. Motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, Douglas Stamp Hill, Portman. Uh, need a second. 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 Everybody say aye. 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 Then on the same uh, board, we got one term expired. Uh, two applicants. One is Kenneth Perkins and the other is Cena Mosley. That's a good point, Cena Mosley. Got a motion to appoint Cena Mosley. Need a second? Second. Got a second. Uh, we do a roll call. Kevin? No. No. Ms. Green? Aye. 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 No. I say no. It fails. Second application of Kenneth Perkins. Have make a motion. motion. Make a motion. motion. Need a second. I second. Second. Uh, we're we'll doing roll call, Miss Calvin. Aye. Miss Green. No. 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 Oh. Aye. 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 
Motion carries. Senator Parsons. Uh, second will be historic preservation advisory committee. One term. We've got two applicants. One is Gloria Victory. The other is Dan uh, Garten. <coughs> Have a, a recommendation to pick Gloria Victory or Dan um, Garden. I nominate Gloria Victory. Um, Gloria Victory need a second. I second. Second. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 On D, we got the Laverne Housing Authority one term. We've got one applicant, at Brenda Bryant. And a motion to appoint her. Make a motion to appoint her. Got a motion and a second. 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 Everyone say aye. 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 On the library board, one term, we got two applicants, Kristen Constanza and Dan Garrett. Motion to appoint Dan Garrett. I was supporting Dan Garrett in his second. Second. Still roll call. On Dan Garrett. Dan Garrett. I'll go with that. Aye. Ms. Green? Aye. So, aye. No. No. I say aye. It's passed. Moving on to Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, one term. Marshall Anthony or Dan Garrett. I make the recommendation to put Marshall on this since we've done just put Dan Garrett on the library board. Second. Everybody in favor for Marshall Anthony? Aye. 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 Okay. Then on Stormwater Appeals Advisory Board one term, we got Don Garrett, Dan Garrett, he's the only applicant. Uh, he, point Dan Garrett. Dan Garrett, he was put on the library board, but I guess he could. Set on two boards. Second on Dan Garrett. Everybody approve, say aye. 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 Number seven, first reading ordinance 2015-02, an ordinance. Dennis, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, you might want to go back to 6B. Okay, I don't have did, did we cover that one? No, okay, 6B. Construction board? Yes. I missed out. Okay, yes. we'll go back to the new business. <clears throat> B, construction board and adjustment appeal board, two terms. Both the existing members want to stay on the board. And who are, I don't have that one. Right Sorry, it's Teresa Hess and John Rutledge. Teresa Hess and Rut Ron Rutledge. John Rutledge. John Rutledge. Yes. I have a motion to put both of them on there. Do we need to do them individually or can I make a motion to uh, accept the two nominees to stay on? I make a motion to accept both uh, to retain their position. Second. Second. Everybody say aye. 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 Moving on to first reading ordinance 2015 02, an ordinance to amend Title II, Chapter 6, Section 2 601 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the member of the local emergency planning commission. That is to, to take uh, the airport, the guy on the airport authority off. Just, uh, they, they have nobody that can be on there, so we're just going to eliminate the airport authority for being on there. I make a motion to amend uh, to dissolve the airport commission's position. A on motion and second. A second. Got a motion second. I would say aye. 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 Number eight. Uh, let's see here. Go number eight. Motion to approve the study for comprehensive facility assessment for a master plan. I think it's what Bruce. Uh, discussed in the workshop that's to uh, prove to spend fifty thousand dollars to do a study on uh, uh, like a new city hall and space on public buildings 
uh, fifty thousand dollars is is in the 2014-2015 budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Got a motion. Second. Everyone say aye. 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 Approved. Aye. Finally, we're down to May and autumn and comments. I'm sorry about the mix-up, but we'll carry on to May and autumn comments. Uh, Calvin. Um, I have no comments. Just everybody keep warm. Tom? I had all my comments uh, last week. Okay. Melissa? I'm good. Everybody have a good month. Miss Green? Yeah, I'm good, too. Everybody. I've got a few things. Uh, Randolph from the code department, uh, everybody needs to keep his little toy poodle in the prayers. He's got one that's real sick, seven years old. Little apricot, same male. Uh, having six toy poodles, I mean, it's, it's, she got a little dog, it means a lot. Uh, just we need to keep him in the prayer, hope that dog uh, gets well. Uh, I know I'm going to be praying for him. For him. If you have a dog and you're a dog lover, then you know how he feels. And uh, again, on the daddy and daughter dance at the uh, Walden's uh, gymnasium, everybody come out Saturday, February the 7th, and it's $10 entry fee. Come out and support. It's a, it's a good thing. And everybody knows Groundhog Day was yesterday, and we got uh, six more weeks of uh, bad weather. And uh, I call it. Call this beat to Jordan.